Right. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the IOCO Click ClickSense update session. Um, these are quarterly update sessions that we'll be having with uh, you, our customers. Um, basically, the idea behind this is that uh, we would look through all the material and basically find the best pieces of information and highlights of what Click has done in the in the in the past few months. I package that and then share that with uh, with you, the customer. Um, today is the second wave. We did uh, some update sessions last week, and uh, we'll be doing uh, another two sessions this week. So today's session is the Click Sense session, and really the theme is um, the February and April release of Click Sense. We'll um, be having Skalk Blanchet and Tepo Marichaghi, our pre-sales consultants, delivering the session to you guys. Um, but before we start with that session, uh, just a few notes. First of all, uh, tomorrow's session is the Click View update session, where we'll be sharing some of the updates in Click View, as well as talking through some of the um, integrations and uh, um, uh, cohabitation type arrangements that uh, Click is 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 um, putting together for Click Sense and Click View. So you really understand uh, where they're going with ClickView and how the two platforms live together and what are your options in terms of migration, etc. cetera. Um, I will say, however, if you've not seen um, the recent releases of ClickSense, um, for, for example, particularly the, the AI cognitive engine bits um, and a general demo of ClickSense, I would join the session tomorrow because there's quite a detailed demo of basic functionality of ClickSense, in particular the AI engine. Um, so that's tomorrow, same time. Uh, right now, I'd like to welcome our MD, uh, Adrian Rousseau, just to uh, give a few words of, of welcome, and then we'll hand it over to the pre-sales team. Adrian. Perfect, thanks, we... appreciate it. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the update session. Um, appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning to go through that. I've asked Kev if I can maybe steal five minutes at the beginning just to introduce myself and give you guys a bit of an update in terms of what's happening um, from a IOCO click perspective. So uh, I'm Adrian Rousseau. I've taken over the role of MD for the click business within IOCO um, at the beginning of February. Um, just a little bit maybe around my background. So I come from a management decision <laughs> background, having spent a number of years uh, in one of the big financial banks, looking at the decision support systems, data warehousing, data management, um, and then progressing that through um, into, consult into consulting role to various companies before joining IOCO. So just an observation from my side so i think with this whole corona um, issue i don't think ever in the history there's been so many questions asked around business and um, so many models done around what does business look like in the short term in the medium term in the long term and i think that's really highlighted the importance of data and being able to use data to give insight so definitely you guys, the guys that works with Click that that's that does that that analysis from an importance perspective, the guys that are able to provide those answers to the executives and to the decision makers um, from an importance perspective has def definitely taken up a key role within the business and um, the the status of those people have gone up in the organization. So I think we'll see that more and more as we go forward with where, where companies are going to be more and more reliant on data, especially where we're working from a remote perspective and it's not business as normal in a very ch quickly changing environment. So I think the, the sessions is definitely opportune um, in terms of seeing how we can giving you guys an update in terms of what's available. And secondly, to engage with you guys in terms of how we can support you in that role. So maybe just to give you a bit of background, what we've been up to, uh, some of you might be aware there's been a number of changes within the click landscape um, in South Africa over the last couple of months. Um, and we had a, a look at this from a management perspective to say, where do we want to be and where do we want to play? 
So we've taken the decision to become an elite partner with Click, really with the aim to move a lot closer to our customers and have direct impact and direct support to our customers rather than working through a simple partner model where we're providing support to the partners who then provide support to the customers. So definitely a, a, a move towards getting closer to the customers um, and engaging more directly with Click um, customers in South Africa. We are still the largest Click partner in Southern Africa. Um, so I know these, these some of our competitors have been using this an excuse to say we've exited the business by no means. In fact, we've invested quite heavily into this business over the last couple of months. Um, I've come on board. Um, we've brought Peter Lindsay on board as our services director. Some of you might have dealt with him already. And Kevin has taken up the role of sales director. Complementary to that, we've also increased our consulting capabilities quite dramatically. We've invested in people. And I think at this stage, we've got some of the best click skills available in the country working for us. We're also going to be doing a lot more in terms of information sessions like these to our customers to help you guys keep abreast with all of the changes that's happening within the click world. Um, and to make sure that we support you in the best possible way in terms of your click usage. So those are some of the stuff that we've been doing. Um, we are also, as far as I know, the, the only accredited click training provider in Southern Africa. So definitely going to be a focus in the months, in the next couple of months in terms of providing click training through to the cut to the customer community and I, I I urge you guys to take advantage of that. So really just a quick introduction to the new management team and um, to give you an idea of where we are and where we aiming to work to play um, in the next couple of months. And I'm hoping that once we get out of this lockdown uh, phase, I'll have the opportunity to meet a lot of the of you of the customers face to face. Um, and go through some of these things with them. Uh, that's really all from my side, Kevin. Anything that you would like to add to that? No, thank you for that overview. Um, Adrian, really been a great boost to the team to have the new leadership team on board. You guys are already providing a lot of uh, guidance and, and structure around the business. So looking forward to the new era of IOCA Click. Um, great. So uh, without further ado, uh, thanks, Adrian. So without further ado, we'll, we'll hand over to the pre-sales team, uh, over to Skulk, who's going to uh, give you guys the good stuff. Skulk, over to you. Good morning. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, just uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Skulk Blanchet. I will present this morning's session. Uh, with me, I have my uh, inmate, in I mean, a colleague who will be handling the uh, actual questions. So what I'm going to ask, uh, just a few housekeeping rules for today's session. Um, please keep your microphone on mute, except obviously uh, towards the end in our Q&A sessions, where you can then ask or pose those questions. I am also going to ask if you can please keep the conversation panel open. As you can see uh, on the screen at the moment, uh, the hide or show conversation. Um, and during the session, uh, you are welcome to actually post your questions there, where my colleague uh, Chepo Marihage will then actually pick up those questions and will uh, respond during our QA sessions. So please do post them. Um, and also please note that this recording or this session is recorded for distribution afterwards. Right, so where do we stand? Um, with our 2020 releases, what we saw in February, uh, the planned date which Click has actually uh, provided to us, uh, we could see for Click Sense, uh, we planned five releases for the year, which is quite significant if you think about it. And we need to keep you up to date with all those releases coming through. And what happened in February? Um, we were planned to see the release mid-February and 
a couple of days before the release, they were holding back on the actual release because there was a security breach in one of the underlying technologies that were greatly used in uh, the product. So uh, what we did see is uh, it was slightly delayed in February um, and it was really uh, only released the last day of February. So they still made the February release cutoff date, uh, but that left us with March and then mid-March we were hit with the potential of a lockdown and a lot of uncertainty and we weren't sure how we we're going to work going forward. And the next moment we are sitting with remote desktop connections just about everywhere and uh, teleconferences uh, everywhere and that really put us into April. So what we've decided from a IOCO point of view is to actually give you a completed update for our February and April release. So today's session is really to highlight those two uh, releases and show you on the ClickSense side some of the nice uh, functionality coming through. So as you stand, we now April release and I'm also glad to state that although we're looking here at the ClickSense um, release date, Click View was also released uh, for those that do not know. Um, this was released on Monday, the 27th. So yes, ClickSense and Click View now have the latest releases available for your perusal. So when we look at our product release for uh, February, now uh, from a Click point of view, uh, a little bit of a, just a hype around what are those significant changes. And what we've seen is uh, more than 10 new visualization capabilities and functionality and i must admit uh, quite a few enhancements that i actually enjoy working with some that i look forward to actually uh, start using um, and then we saw some of our uh, enhancements in a software as a service edition of click sense so yes uh, the so-called cloud uh, version it's also available for us and then there was a new methodology introduced um, to make people more excited about the interactive uh, interactiveness with data and that was the so-called dynamic views uh, one of the uh, value-added products the click data catalyst qvd was also uh, included with some enhancements that we could actually see within a click sense uh, session so every session what you will notice um, there will be a lot of uh, be, uh, uh, focus on function on uh, some, some of the visualization and enhancements on uh, graphs and tables and things like that and then some focus on a visualization and uh, uh, and then in addition to that our value added products and then also some of the connections to different data sources so they always try to keep a good mix between your visualization which gives the end user some uh, uh, enhanced capabilities but also in the back end some of the uh, functionality linking to um, different data sources etc so if we had to recap uh, just taking that into account when we look at the february release uh, on click sense itself uh, some of the dynamic views, new visualization, dashboard and styling, quite a, a bit on ClickSense and then a little bit on the clicks, uh, Click Inside bot. And for those that haven't seen that yet, uh, quite a nice functionality where you're really interacting with the Inside bot, so-called the Click Inside bot, asking questions and it really answers those questions. And I have to admit, uh, if you compare Click Inside Bot to uh, Siri, as an example, uh, the big differentiator is the Click Inside Bot keeps context. So when you ask about sales, and you, uh, it will give you the total sales. And when you ask uh, sales for a specific region or just for a specific region, what it will do is it will actually keep context that you, your first question was about sales and the second one is about a region so it will give you the sales for that specific region so you're really starting to interact with inside bot and literally having that conversation um, which is really quite impressive 
Uh, on the other hand, if you had to ask a question uh, to Sari as a serious example, and you ask uh, what is it uh, Sharon's uh, greatest hit at the moment, it will probably tell you it's perfect. Um, and that is what I've heard from my daughter. And when you ask Siri the next question, uh, what is his age? You would get the response, sorry, I do not understand your question. Because Siri didn't understand, but your follow-up question was uh, relating to Ed Sheeran. And that is a big differentiator where you could actually have or start having that conversation with inside bot. Um, on uh, in printing side, what we've seen um, for those uh, that have worked with in-printing previously, uh, an enhancement on the in-printing side is where you could use uh, uh, the actual click sense or click view objects or a sheet directly as a click in-printing report for distribution. So that means you do not require the, uh, the designer component to actually build or design that report for a distribution. What we've also seen is a few enhancements on some of our click connectors, especially on the uh, SAP connector where there were major enhancements and also some expansions on the cloud ODBC drivers. Um, also a big uh, release was the uh, enhancements to the Google Big Query uh, uh, connectors, which we've actually had some challenges with responses uh, uh, since the November release. So that has been addressed in the February release. And then big news in February, although we didn't really share too much of it. Um, I know some of you were introduced to the so-called Ping Alerting or Rocks AI who presented Ping Alerting. Um, and in February, Click announced that they've actually took over the Rocks AI company and it's now in incorporated into the Click uh, 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 family of products, which enables context alerting. That means uh, as an end user, you could actually set alerts based on data or based on information on some of your existing uh, ClickSense applications. Uh, yes, this was only for ClickSense. So that means uh, if you have a threshold in one of your applications and you actually make use of ping alerting and that threshold uh, were reached, it will trigger that alert being sent to you where you can will be notified um, by ClickSense uh, about this threshold being triggered. Uh, again, nice uh, interaction or from a, a self-service capability for end users. Now, if we focus just on some of the detail of those uh, uh, enhancements, uh, please note I am going through a presentation. Uh, this presentation will be made available afterwards. Thereafter, I'm going into a actual click sense application to show the details around some of these visualizations. So I will cover more detail uh, in the, uh, the second part of this. What we've seen uh, with uh, February release, uh, big enhancements on trend lines. So yes, previously we had the average trend line and that was fine. In addition, we started seeing a, a, a number of trend lines, uh, linear uh, coming through, averages coming through, um, and second degree polynomial uh, uh, trend lines, which was a big enhancement on the visualization. And for those that have worked with ClickView before, um, pretty much the same uh, what you've experienced in ClickView, it's now enabled in ClickSense and it's pretty much just a selection or enablement of uh, toggle switches that allows this. So they really try to make it quite easy for the end user um, and also for your contributors to, uh, 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 to create really good uh, visualization on information, because that is really what you want. You want that visualization to tell the story. Um, and uh, if you look at a visualization and you it's not clear what the message that you're trying to convey, then you should consider trying to use a different method of showing that information. Um, we also saw uh, a significant uh, enhancement on the table trend indicators. Now, to me, this was probably one of the 
best capabilities. Uh, I always refer to it as the JSE indicators because um, I've been in a position where uh, it's great. We always use color and we bring in the red, amber, green until the one day where I was confronted by one of the, the actual members in the audience uh, telling me that they were colorblind. Now, how do you address that? And uh, the answer is simple through visualization uh, tricks uh, like uh, trend line or trend indicators. And at the bottom where you could see a triangle showing direction, which would either indicate whether we down or we up or we, there was no movement. So to me, that was really one of the best uh, uh, enablements in the February release. Uh, in addition, moving averages and differences. Previously, that was quite a calculation in a measure that we had to create. But nowadays, it's literally, uh, if you go onto the properties of the actual visualization uh, on some of the tables, it is just an enablement of that, uh, pro that function. Uh, for those that have worked with funnel charts, um, what they have done is on funnel charts, uh, an improvement on the actual sort order, because um, sometimes the sort order on a funnel chart uh, is very important, not just uh, based on the actual value or the measure, but you actually want to uh, change it uh, based on a certain category, uh, especially if you look at a, uh, a customer experience and you want to move people from a certain point to a certain point, but you have different categories assigned to it, you actually want to see uh, where there is a bit of a hold up or bottleneck. So that enablement really makes a visualization clear. You can immediately see where you stand with what. If we look at uh, our custom uh, map point symbols, a uh, nice one where you can now include uh, actual symbols on a uh, point uh, on your maps, uh, especially using flags or uh, images uh, by uh, showing that on a particular map. Dashboard and styling, but also something uh, that were requested and uh, um, a while ago. And with our February release, there was a major uh, uh, improvement on the actual uh, uh, action buttons. And what they did do was to actually bring in uh, the change your colors. You can change your uh, action button to, a, to the background being an image. And it also included additional actions. Um, something else on the custom tool tips. Uh, this was also uh, for those, uh, if you hover on one of your uh, visualizations, what you've seen was your measure being listed and if uh, it didn't uh, have a proper label, you saw quite a, a significant uh, length of text being displayed. So a few things that they have done there was to show the actual uh, measure and then in some cases you are limited with the number of measures that you could show. However, with the custom tool tip, what that enabled was that you could now increase the number of uh, tool tips that you can show. As you can see on the screen, the dark gray, uh, the measure actually only includes sales. But in this particular case, we have included the discount, the cost of sale, the fright, and the last order within the actual uh, tool tips. Um, and as I've mentioned, the map layer improvements tooltips are also included in the map layer. Duplicate or a duplicate function for those, um, how can I put it? I don't want to say lazy uh, contributors. I would rather see, uh, say, uh, uh, well-experienced um, contributors. You just want to duplicate a, a, a visualization and then change it to another visualization. That is now enabled and you can do that very quickly and efficiently. Uh, we've seen a lot of enhancements on our pivot table styling uh, and also our line charts styling. A line chart was quite significant with regards to the actual thickness and whether it should be a solid line or a dashed uh, dash line. And also when you uh, have a, uh, a point or data point on your line chart, whether you want to make that uh, increase that size as well. So a lot of uh, functionality coming through in that particular case. 
I've mentioned dynamic views earlier, and uh, dynamic views um, is one of those methodologies uh, to actually give a better enhancement to uh, end users um, when they interact with uh, in click sense. Uh, what we did was to actually enable the so-called dynamic view, and that really uh, enables a specific visualization to be reloaded at that time when you are interacting with that visualization. So yes, you heard correctly, it reloads the data at that point when you're interacting. So that means you can have uh, both dynamic views and your normal regular visualization. And while you are actually uh, uh, interacting with the data, if you go to a dynamic view, what will happen is based on your filters, that data will be, be reloaded and presented so that you can actually get the most up-to-date information within your uh, visualize, uh, within your uh, actual application. So yes, uh, one has to take this into consideration when you start working with big data, big volumes of data, always be careful with regards to responses but it enables the, uh, the end user to get the latest view on that particular set of data. Um, for those that have worked with on-demand application generation, it is using a very similar concept where as you apply filters only at a certain point will it actually retrieve the data uh, as expected. Um, QED uh, catalog within ClickSense, um, this is one of those value-added products, uh, which um, I know uh, a lot of interest. Um, so if I had to, well, if somebody had to ask the question, what is Data Catalyst? Uh, now the Click Data Catalyst is uh, a modern enterprise data management solution that really simplifies and speeds up how you catalog, manage, and prepare your data. So uh, it, even in this particular case where it is a QVD catalog, this focuses very much on your QVDs. So if you are uh, in the, uh, within your architecture where you do use uh, QVDs, what this really enables is to give you that view of your underlying QVDs. And as you can see in a click sense uh, view, you can see uh, some of your data uh, 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 information uh, with regards to QVDs. So that really enables that, I almost want to say that um, shopping experience for your data. You can browse your data and then decide what uh, or which data you want to use. So really quite a nice functionality that came through. So that was the uh, February release. Uh, Chepo, I uh, just want to ask on your side, um, are there any questions that came through? No, it's been quiet on this side, Skalk. I think we, we can carry on. But guys, do remember, if you have questions with regards to what's going on, kindly just post them on the on the chat session and we'll try and address them. If not, we'll handle them at the Q&A session. But not, nothing so far, Skalk. Thanks. Carry on. Thank you, Chepo. So I take it we have well-informed uh, customers, which is always great to see that uh, uh, all they are so excited about the new functionality. So hopefully we'll see more questions coming through. Great, so if we look at our product release for April uh, 2020, uh, again, uh, some of the big uh, news coming through the Click uh, Sense Enterprise software as a service, and I've already started working with it. And I have to admit, it was quite significant in the sense that uh, when you look at how uh, from a Click Sense, a Click View, and then your software as a service uh, or cloud uh, component, how we actually start working with the, within that a particular in a different environments, but start collaborating it in the software as a service component uh, really makes quite a big uh, difference and a great experience. So for a end user 
whether they're looking at a click view application or whether they look at a click sense application, they have as one a unified hub that really makes it so much nicer because you've got this one landing area where you can then access some of your other click view and click sense applications. This is really uh, as part of that uh, they've launched the analytics modernization for ClickView customers, and that is really where they try to uh, uh, actually enable uh, ClickView uh, uh, customers to experience a ClickSense and the actual uh, SaaS uh, or software as a service uh, component. So really something to look forward to. Um, again, some of the new visualizations, uh, user experience, management and connectivity improvements, which I would cover again uh, going through the presentation. So when we look at um, our Click sense uh, visualizations, uh, quite a number of uh, visualizations again coming through. Uh, there is this user onboarding uh, improvements, uh, content sharing and hub, and a lot of functionality that really makes it uh, nice uh, and uh, so much more user friendly for some of the actual contributors and uh, uh, consumers. So if we look at our uh, April 2020 um, uh, releases. So um, the April 2020 uh, data analytics release coincides with the launch of ClickSense Enterprise, as I've um, mentioned. And it's really a new offer for customers who want to deploy ClickSense Enterprise exclusively in Clicks Cloud. Um, so yes, we you'll see a lot of more focus coming through on the Click cloud uh, component, um, but it really is something to look forward to and uh, start using. Um, with regards to our user onboarding, uh, again, Click continue to enhance the uh, Click or the cloud uh, onboarding experience to help customers get started with ClickSense uh, quickly and easy. And what they have done is in that hub, uh, that unified hub, they've actually uh, in, uh, in enable uh, people with uh, tips and tricks and videos to get started quickly and a lot of reference material. So they really want to empower the end user uh, to start uh, quicker within that environment where they have everything at the tip of their fingers, really making it uh, uh, so much more user friendly and to get started. Uh, when we look at some of the, uh, as part of that, uh, share, that hub and uh, the self-service improvements, uh, from a contributor uh, point of view, uh, again, a lot of functionality coming in where you could actually enable that uh, self-service uh, for the end user. And what we have seen, uh, some of the new things being uh, uh, added is a so-called uh, app management console. Again, this is not something for everybody, but a new functionality where it enables uh, a uh, application management console where a contributor can interact with reports and set, set and distribute certain uh, components within uh, ClickSense uh, for, for your administrators, for report owners, those that have or had a view of your uh, click management console, and you've seen some of those tasks uh, with regards to uh, uh, applications for rescheduling and things like that, that is really now being included in your uh, application management console. Um, in February, uh, we've mentioned uh, Click uh, purchasing uh, Rocks AI, and in April, we already see some of that alerting uh, coming uh, through. Um, so again, uh, being uh, enabled in February as a value-added product, now it is already being um, seen in some of the uh, components where you can set notifications. Um, on imprinting side, uh, in addition to the normal task distribution and where you have uh, your uh, email contra uh, your email uh, uh, distribution uh, list what they have done is now that email address was linked to a user id uh, as part of the admin setup within uh, your uh, uh, imprinting management console in addition, you now have additional email lists that you can include, a so-called dynamic list, which makes the distribution of your uh, reporting a lot easier. Uh, 
so really something to look forward to. As I've mentioned, uh, February 2020 with data, uh, cat uh, click data catalyst that's being uh, included. In April already, what we've seen as part of this click data catalyst, where your data catalyst is really showing you certain uh, data sources, your tables, where it is located. And remember, this was that capability of actually enabling that. Um, I do want to refer to it again as the shopping basket for your data. In this particular case, I am actually glad to state uh, for those that do make use of uh, click view or QVDs, um, click data catalyst April release now enables the actual uh, picking up of that data source and the actual creation of uh, so you publish data into a QVD format. A big enhancement uh, for those working with QVDs, which now means your ClickSense applications can make use of those QVD files. Um, and then on the uh, big data uh, index, uh, the April release uh, enables ClickSense enterprise users in a cloud environment uh, the ability to connect to their own hosted Click Big Data Index instance. So uh, a great enhancement in that capability where um, and this really uh, again just shows you how it can interact with uh, in this case big data with great volumes of data. Um, on the click view side um, again a big focus um, on the actual automation of a QV document upload to ClickSense, and that is uh, where you really start seeing the, I do want to say, the sharing or collaboration between your different environments, between ClickSense, ClickView, and also Click in the Cloud with your unified hub where you can actually get to all your uh, applications from this particular hub. Um, on Click Connectors, what we've seen, uh, enhancements or inclusion of Microsoft Dynamic Connectors, and yes, now included also Outlook 365, and I think today even more so with more people using Outlook, Outlook 365 and especially Teams, and also uh, use uh, SharePoint, uh, those connectors are now available for download where you could actually interact with some of the information being stored in Office 365 and also SharePoint. Um, I was quite uh, amazed with one of my colleagues that uh, during this week uh, downloaded uh, one of those connectors to uh, Outlook 365 and started looking or tracking a particular email address, the so-called inbox, and could actually tell us how many emails came in, how many were uh, attended to, and how many still outstanding. Now, can you imagine in a call center where they actually track certain email addresses? This is a perfect scenario where you can now see this, uh, giving you that information and also give you an indication whether you should get more people onto that email address to attend to emails if your queue starts going out of control. So to me, a very effective way of using the Outlook 365 connector. Um, in April 2020, one of our biggest changes of a so-called uh, navigation change where uh, we see the enhancement on our single page application flow. Now, the single page application flow was those three indicators uh, in the top, indicating whether you were busy with data or whether you were busy with uh, your analysis or with storytelling. As you can see on the screen now, the data component has been renamed to prepare. And you no longer get uh, have to go to your drop down on the left hand side uh, to go to those different options. Under your prepare or the old data single page application flow, you can now immediately go to your data manager, your data load editor, and then your data model viewer. 
um, if you look at those three options, the data manager is really for uh, contributors where they start building applications and they want to make use of the AI component. Uh, yes, the augmented intelligence uh, component built into ClickSense, which will assist the contributor in starting to interact with data okay. sources. Good, Good morning, Gary. Welcome. Um, so if you look at the data manager uh, with that AI, it really shows you how to interact with data. And yes, it will assist you in actually joining or linking data. A uh, very powerful uh, component for contributors to start interacting with data. The data load editor, still for the old techies amongst us, who still would like to sit down and write their own code. Um, yes, I'm one of those, but I always compare back to data manager. And I have to be honest, I have learned some nice tricks within the code of data manager, which I could actually uh, reuse in uh, the data load editor. Um, I always keep an open mind about this. Yes, it's machine learning that we see in data manager where it will create code for us and i have to admit i've worked through that code and i am surprised to see what code it actually generates so something to really look uh, forward to uh, the data model viewer for the business of a business analyst amongst us and to me that really uh, shows um, one of those um, and again i'm going to use a, a, a swear word here uh, it really creates the entity relational diagram or the so-called ERD showing you your tables with the actual relation between those tables. So for business analysts, nice view to actually validate data models within ClickSense. And then if you now look at your uh, uh, the new uh, single page application flow, so-called analyze, and in analyze, you would see there is a sheet. So obviously, uh, if there is, uh, if it's a, a new application, there won't be any sheets. It will take you to a blank sheet where you can start creating sheets. If there are sheets, you can actually uh, click on the drop down directly and navigate straight to the sheet that you would like to view. So that really makes the navigation with ClickSense so much easier. Um, and a big uh, note here, just below sheet, you would also see insights. Insights are no longer part of your actual sheets or selections option on the top right. It is now part of your anal or analyze single page application uh, option. So a bit of a change on the navigation. Storytelling still there. It's just now on a, under a new name called Narrate. And then for the contributors that have started working with uh, the uh, February and April release, while you're in a edit mode, uh, if you look at your fields option uh, from your assets panel, at the bottom of your fields option, you have an option to either add data or just to simply reload the data model. Yes, in your edit mode, there is a refresh or reload data option. So you don't have to go to the load editor or to data manager to reload new data every time. You can actually do that from your edit mode. One of the big things that have been uh, uh, introduced was the org chart. Um, this was something from a from a HR point of view, really something that have been asked how many times can you create this, can you create this? And the workaround for this was to create single text objects, uh, which I've seen people make use and then actually create that organizational chart. With the latest release, this is now included and this is really based on uh, two components, uh, your employee ID and your manager ID. And if you have that in your actual data structures, um, you can then create this type of visualization. And it really shows you, uh, as you can see on the green part, uh, the, uh, Eric Presley, as an example, uh, showing the uh, minus two, indicating that there are two uh, people, two employees 
um, actually uh, reporting to Eric. Uh, further down, you can see as it expands, you can also collapse this. And I have to state um, we, the previous example where we were looking at uh, the Office 365 uh, connectors. Um, what my colleague did was to look at Teams, and as you uh, in Teams can create uh, folders, uh, and those folders being uh, a grouping of uh, files, you can even show or use this organizational chart to show you in uh, SharePoint uh, certain folder structures being presented using this org chart. So to me, that was a very good example of actually how to create these org charts and um, make it uh, uh, effectively within a, a SharePoint environment. Um, I have to admit, I think with uh, Click's smart search capability, that really makes uh, the, the search function in Click far superior to what we, I personally have experienced in SharePoint. And uh, maybe it's just because I um, do make a couple of mistakes in my uh, spelling mistakes when I search, uh, but with Click, uh, with a smart search, it actually pick, picks up a pattern in what you are trying to type and then assist greatly in that search option. Uh, sharing of bookmarks, uh, this was uh, again uh, enhancement on a data collaboration um, and this is something uh, between uh, uh, your contributors, you are busy creating uh, 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 within a, a public uh, or, uh, uh, application, you can create a bookmark. This will be a shared bookmark. You can then share that to another person by actually uh, uh, in clicking on that uh, option to show the bookmark link. You can copy it to a, a text object or to text file and then send it to someone else. That means the other individual receiving that uh, bookmark can see exactly what you have selected and you can have that conversation. It really makes that collaboration between people a lot easier. Under normal circumstances, your bookmark, bookmarks, pretty much like a favorite. It is something that you use quite often or something that um, uh, if you in a browser, certain sites where you go back to for, uh, for certain information um, and the same use of that favorite, that is what you would uh, use a bookmark for, for in Click Sense. Uh, one of the big highlights for the April 2020 release is the relative modifiers. Um, again, for those uh, that have worked with Click View, uh, this was probably the easiest way of actually taking a measure or expression and just turn it into a relative modifier. And in click view, it was really just a tick box and it did it for you. So really smart technology. What we didn't see uh, in ClickSense was that same capability. I am glad to state with our April release, that is now enabled and we can actually select that. And in the presentation, I will show you uh, under your expression, you can see that there is a new selection option coming through and that is called your modifier. And that is where you can select the relative numbers. Very nice. As you can, uh, there are different options. One thing that I do have to state, it's only available on bar, combo, line and table chart. Um, I have to state, I tested this yesterday and it is not available in pivot charts yet. So please be aware of it, but I am sure we will see probably in the next release that uh, some of these enhancements being uh, rolled out to some, some of the other uh, visualizations. So keep, uh, this, uh, keep watching this space. Sheet triggers, um, another lovely one where we can actually now, based uh, on um, the sheet triggers enablement and also the use of bookmarks with action buttons, what we are trying to, uh, to showcase here is that we are now, with ClickSense, moving into the space of guided analytics. We saw that in ClickView, where uh, if you navigate based on the action button, 
you could set to uh, variables, you could set select statements, you could select bookmarks and things like that, and then actually navigate to another uh, worksheet and have those uh, selections then uh, being enabled. In ClickSense, April 2020, we can see that coming through again, and some of the actions uh, as listed there, um, selection manipulation, field state, bookmarks, and also variables. So this really makes the journey of our click view uh, customers to click sense a lot easier, because those were some of the functions that uh, were weren't available in ClickSense, but as you can see now, more and more of these functionality from ClickView are becoming available within ClickSense. Um, in uh, using some of these examples, uh, what you could do is, and uh, I've tested this uh, last week, um, where you could create a bookmark for on a very specific um, uh, uh, application, and that uh, uh, bookmark with its layout can then be set as the default bookmark. When you open the application or uh, on the hub, uh, you'll see the applications or the list of applications on the hub. But if you click on that hub, instead of then showing you an overview of all the sheets, you can actually bypass that with uh, these sheet triggers and bookmarks and literally enable that first worksheet that you want people to see. And uh, this was tested successfully and again, enhancing the navigation of our end users. Uh, on pivot tables, the, uh, in April 20, uh, on February, we saw uh, enhancements on uh, uh, the pivot table. And in uh, the latest release, April, we see additional enhancements to the pivot tables where the table layout is stored and it can now be saved as part of a bookmark. So that means you can set it in your bookmark and people can still change the uh, actual layout of pivot tables by moving some of the dimensions, obviously if they're a contributor, and that really enables the end user to view the measures based on a different grouping of dimensions. However, they can always revert back to that bookmark and showing the intent of that bookmark uh, as it kept the original uh, layout within your pivot table. Uh, another a nice one that we saw on table improvements for uh, those that do work with uh, Excel amongst us. Obviously not too many, because I, I assume you mostly work with ClickView and ClickSense. Just kidding. Um, in ClickSense, uh, what we now see is the option freeze column or fr uh, uh, freeze uh, the first column. And again, when you navigate, uh, whether uh, it's a mobile device or any uh, desktop or a laptop, by having that enabled, it really keeps at first that heading row and you can then scroll and making it your user experience a lot easier because you now know what you're looking at. Um, so to me, that was actually seeing something from Excel coming into Click Sense, uh, really a nice way of working with uh, some of our visualizations. Um, and then the search functionality has been extended to uh, include labels and URLs. For those of you that have worked with uh, tables with uh, links where you could actually specify a URL, this option now enables you to scroll, or not to scroll, uh, to do a smart search. And while performing that smart search, it will pick up any label or any URL where that uh, the word or the, the search fun, uh, search pattern is uh, in that particular label or URL. So again, I think looking at this type of functionality, uh, it just shows how they focus on the user experience, get, uh, making it a lot easier for our consumers. Uh, when we look at our chart improvements, uh, again on our chart layers, you'll see an enhancements on color and formatting 
but came through, uh, especially uh, at the bottom when you look at sales, you can even in your pop-up, you can actually change that or enhance uh, that formatting to show uh, very specific numbers and colors, uh, where previously it was only based on the actual measure. Uh, an increase of uh, the items that can be uh, displayed on a point or area map layer, uh, they've increased it to 50,000. I am always wary of this, uh, uh, the limits that's been set, because um, if you work with 50,000 uh, items on a point, are you using the correct way of displaying that uh, option, or are there other ways of displaying uh, that 50,000 items, e.g. by grouping it in a the so-called bin where you could use that bin to do your navigation and to show information and once you click on that bin uh, or that selected bin then only do you enable your next point layer where you can go down to the actual items within that bin so again uh, quite a few enhancements on our uh, map layers um, on tool tips. Uh, again, uh, there are certain things that you can now hide, especially on the uh, rows that you want to display. Um, also, uh, where they've got a big uh, change on the, the KPIs uh, layout, where you can now change it uh, on the actual set it, whether it's fixed, fluid or responsive because um, in some cases well as we know click sense has always been very strong on rendering a visualization according to the device that you use so they've always enabled that responsive view however uh, on request from uh, customers there are certain things that they want to keep either fluid or fixed where it should not be changed and in that particular uh, case click listen to the customers and they've actually enabled this type of uh, formatting on uh, pivot tables another enhancement uh, so the first enhancements were based on layouts in bookmarks in uh, february we saw the change of headings we uh, saw the change of uh, the text um, the colors and also uh, the actual um, um, text formatting of your headers. In uh, April release, an enhancement to this is uh, the sorting by the first measure. And as you can see, we uh, on the right-hand side, we have a sort order based on that measure or expression, which would be your first uh, sort order. Thereafter, the next sort order would be by uh, uh, in this case, country and country is being set uh, accordingly. So what will happen is it will sort by sales first and then by the actual country and then by the actual uh, category. Uh, what that really means within the different uh, uh, countries, as you can see, uh, men's footwear was the highest uh, uh, item being sold. And in the USA, ladies footwear and by sorting on that first measure, you now enable this view based by country. So it's really coming back to your top category or top products by country within a pivot table. And then least but not last, uh, what we've seen, and I think most of us have experienced this even now during this lockdown phase, what has happened even from a click point of view, uh, on day one, uh, you should have received a email from our account executive or executives uh, telling you guys about the uh, training that's been enabled by Click, where some of it has been made uh, available for free. And I would really recommend that you do go to uh, learning.click.com and look at some of these uh, training uh, modules because it really it enables whether you a a consumer, how to navigate, or whether you're a contributor and adding and creating, it really uh, assists in some of the smaller things um, based on um, your capabilities and your pace. So this is for you. Please make use of this. Uh, Chepo, I'm going to hand over to you just for a minute. Are there any questions that came through? 
Yes, uh, Scott, there has been uh, questions which I did try and answer. So okay. I just wanted to confirm, are we going to cover the on-demand chat generation in the demo? Uh, the the on-demand view or the on-demand app generation? The on-demand view, so which uh, is the no. chat generation is. Okay, okay. No, no, that's fine. Have, yeah, because I don't have okay, a live the, data source. Okay, and then um, the, the, the duplicate functions, is that something that's going to be done or can we handle it in the documentation and the help? Um, I let's see if we can do it. Let me just make a note of a duplicate function uh, on an object. Yeah. So let's yeah. run. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if I can actually do that with. Uh, oh no, I won't do it in this one because this one it has been prepared. Uh, this is one of our WhatsApp live applications. So I'm uh, not going to do it in this one. Uh, but uh, what we can do is uh, I can actually show that uh, if we still have time left at the end of the session. Okay. Um, just right, a Mayor. quick note, there is quite a few questions. Uh, so if we can't get to the questions, we'll set up a follow-up session on Teams with uh, with the individual. Um, I know there's uh, there's particular individuals that got quite a few questions that falls outside of the scope of this update, but we definitely do want to connect with you and discuss that in more detail, see if we can support. Uh, that, that is okay. perfect. Yes, we can do that. Just a quick Great. note while we mm -hmm. go over to the demos. I've posted a, a, a question there uh, in the chat area, um, just asking what part of your organization do you represent, business or technical? Um, so if you can just click on that and submit your vote, let's have a look at um, the composition of our audience. Sometimes people outside of the organization can't submit a vote, just then type in the, in the chat box and we'll, we'll get a feel for for the audience and how technical we go. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, it's always important to know the audience because um, you don't want to go into too much technical discussions and start talking about SQL statements and uh, where clause and group by clause and having clauses and I've lost the whole audience because they have no idea what we're talking about uh, except for two techies having a nice conversation. So it's always good to just, uh, um, so how's that the polling going? Uh, we're still getting responses in, so I think you can carry on with the demo and then we'll do the, the tally at the end. Okay, thank you. Right, so um, what I have here in front of me or on screen uh, is the April 2020 release. And as you can see uh, right from the word go, um, as I've mentioned, our single page navigation at the top, we now have our prepare section and immediately from there, I can go to the data manager, the data load editor or my data model viewer. Uh, on analyze, I can go to sheets or I can go to insights. Uh, remember, insights used to be located here on the right hand side next to selections. It's no longer available there. It is now from the word go available in your analyze mode uh, or single page uh, navigation. So that means on the left hand side, you still have some of your app overview and uh, hub information available where you can go straight to that. Um, the option of um, that duplication, um, the question was asked to actually demo it. In this particular case, I'm already on a sheet and what I can now do is I can actually from this point uh, duplicate uh, this sheet. I don't have to go to my sheet navigation, click on the drop down and then uh, create uh, uh, duplicate that sheet. So another enhancement that came through in your actual app overview or drop down. Um, so right, so if we look at ClickSense, um, so single page navigation, big change on the actual navigation. Uh, if I then go to some of the visualizations, what I do want to show here is uh, within this, uh, when we look at our trend lines, uh, what we've seen is previously we had a single trend line and what we can do now is we've now can see that was the normal trend line, the average, and now we can go to a linear 
or a second degree polynomial with your mathematical expressions, third degree, fourth degree, and you can see how it actually changed on your line chart and also on a bar chart. Uh, so you can see uh, logarithmic and also the power uh, trend lines. A big enhancement uh, based on this, and this is really if you go into your edit mode where you can see um, the type of trend lines being added. And if you look at the linear uh, trend line, and all it is is a case of a On the trend line, I have an option to select whether I want to see average, linear, second degree, and so on. So really, again, just that enablement, as you can see from your uh, drop-down selection, where they really try to make it so easy for contributors. There's no longer that expression that you have to go and create. It is a case where you just select or uh, uh, so, uh, use a toggle switch to enable this, really making it a lot easier for uh, users to actually create and uh, create great visualizations. Um, when I've also mentioned in your edit mode, so as you can see, we in edit mode at the moment, uh, uh, highlighted here at the top. If I look at my fields selection top left, here I can see all my fields being selected. At the bottom, I can add data to the application or I can simply refresh the data. So that means if I have a new data source that has been updated, I can select refresh right there and then I don't have to go to the load editor to actually load the data, uh, making it a lot easier for the contributors. When we uh, look at some of our tool tips, uh, again, if we in a navigation mode, what you can see is on a bar chart, combo, pie, scatter, tree map, and also your map chart. Uh, if I hover on that particular uh, visualization, as you can see in the actual visualization, there is a measure sales by a year. However, as part of a custom Tool tip, what I have done was to add the uh, cost of sale, the freight, and the customer and countries. Uh, note that for area or for maps, it's not on the base map, it is on the area layer where you set this. So if I go back into our edit mode, uh, click on the object and under appearance, right at the bottom, I can see under my actual tool tip section, there you can see tool tips. If you expand that, here I have an option now to actually include additional measures. And as you've seen, the uh, cost of sale, freight, the number of customers, and the number of uh, countries. And yes, it is a simple expression with its label being added as a part of a custom tooltip. I do think this makes uh, a lot of uh, or it does add a lot of value, especially if you are limited and you have to look at a visualization like this where you can now include that actual uh, tooltip. Yes, the main focus is on sales, but there's additional information that I can actually show in that tooltip. The line styling, uh, interesting, as you can see, uh, the line styling has always been one of those big questions with regards to when can we see enhancements on our line graph and what we've seen in the February release, major changes coming through. You can see in this particular case, color changes. Now, please note that uh, this color change here uh, was in fact not based on the line uh, color that we are setting, but rather on the master item that we have used. And within that uh, master item, as we can see, here, they've actually used the segment colors, uh, red and green. So based on that master item, it is now being displayed accordingly in the visualization. Uh, what you can see uh, on the visualization also, um, a lot of new things that came through in the presentation layer under appearance. 
what we see is still the line and the area versus our vertical and our horizontal uh, that you can show. Um, and if we look at uh, some of these uh, information, what is quite interesting, the fact that we now have a new component coming through that uh, gives you the option if you work with uh, data and you have uh, data missing. How do you actually show that? And in this particular case, you can show it as gaps. So this is one of those uh, community discussions, uh, not just for Click, but various communities on the correct visualization of information, whether it should be excluded or not. So I'm glad to see that that is actually coming through. So based on that, uh, as you can see, uh, we can see various components on that. And if you click on styling uh, just above it, in addition, you now have a line type being solid or dashed. So you can set it whether it should be a solid or a dashed line. In this particular case, uh, on the styling, you can see uh, that uh, we have our, uh, a solid. And if you go down to uh, additionals, you can also see that the line type in this particular case is a dashed. Uh, that dashed showing here in the middle. Now, based on that, you can also set your actual line thickness. You can now control that, um, and you can also set the actual data points uh, in size if it is enabled. Again, nice uh, uh, functionality. We, we, you can actually enhance your line graph visualizations. Okay. If you look at our pivot tables, what we have seen is the uh, enhancements on headers where we can actually set the color, we can set the text and we're bold or not. We can also show the background colors. In this particular case, you can see the category has a different background color than the actual uh, items being sold. You can also see the visualization being changed. And in this particular case, uh, you can also now align the actual values where it should be left, right or center aligned. Uh, on our headings, completely different from the actual data in the pivot table, you can also set the background color on this. Um, as I've mentioned, to me, this was probably the best visualization uh, a functionality being added, and that is the table indicators. And if, if I switch it on, what you can see, additional calculations now coming through and effectively using uh, the actual uh, color picker. So what you can see as part of that color picker or that palette, they have now included symbols, which you can now actually add to your visualization. And again, as I've mentioned, uh, somebody that's uh, colorblind might not see that as green or, or red, so they don't know. But by the mere fact of the actual negative uh, indicator in front of the actual value, but also the triangle showing you the uh, uh, um, a direction indicates whether we are doing well or not. So really to me, this was one of the most exciting things that I've seen in the actual visualization. Uh, the action buttons, as I mentioned in the February release, what we have seen is uh, various options and enhancements. We can see the different styles coming through now uh, and the different changes really enabling the, uh, the contributor or developer to create a app-like a type of navigation um, and some of the navigation or the uh, options that I do like is effective use of background color and uh, this is being said by uh, variable making use of variables where it can actually you can see here just by a different shading nothing major but I can see which of my actual options I am looking at so that toggle switch uh, or just plain uh, at the top here as you can see uh, it changes the color. Um, images on buttons, as you can see, making it a bit more visually effective. You really want to start associating, and as we always do, we associate colors with certain things, um, red being negative as always. Um, so yes, certain things you do want to make use of color, and by using some of the action or the, the 
background colors, it really makes that navigation option uh, more app-like feeling. Uh, moving differences uh, on our uh, actual visualizations, uh, what we have seen is uh, on this measure, uh, if you go to our data and I go to my actual uh, measures, the top being my sales, and then I have a moving average, and all that is is my expression, but under the expression, I now have this option about modifiers, and within modifiers, I can now either select a accumulation, and if I select accumulation, I can also select the steps, whether it should be a full accumulation or something like a, a rolling three months or rolling six months. That is not something coming through. And again, as you can see is, yes, you have your expression. Then you actually start with just selecting an option and it enables that uh, selection that you've uh, created there. As you can see, if I select a moving average, it would be for the rolling three months. Uh, very similar to that, I can also on the measure uh, based on the, uh, the actual sales measure, I can also change my modifier to a difference and compared to last month. So what it's doing in this particular case, as, uh, as you can see, the difference. Uh, so the difference being selected and I'm comparing that to my previous month and a nice visualization of how to actually keep track of uh, the previous month compared to this month. Very effective way of showing information. Um, then on our uh, maps, as I've mentioned, we can now include icons. Uh, and so even on those certain areas, the flag being shown on that actual data point. In addition to that, I can change my map layers in the background by, as you can see at the bottom here, sea surface on water temperature. So what it's doing, it's, it actually now includes the sea surfaces temperatures. And we can see uh, as we look at the country, well, look at the country and we go up and look at the actual world map. You can see, uh, oh yes, we have a bit of cold water down in Cape Town. That is normal. But as you can see, a nice way of actually bringing more information based on something completely different in your layers in your background. So it is based on that actual point where we can see the, the inclusion of a icon or image and also layers within your background. Uh, then our funnel chart. This is always a, quite an interesting way of dis displaying information. And as I uh, mentioned, by default, it's, uh, it's sorted by uh, your measure. You can now overwrite and you can do a sort by the actual dimension uh, in a different sort order based on your uh, actual criteria. Uh, as an example, if you want to look at your customer journey with uh, that you have with your customers and you have set uh, criteria and categories assigned to that, you want to sort it according to that, those categories and not necessarily uh, uh, according to your actual uh, measure. So in this case, you can change it showing you that information accordingly. And then to me, uh, if you look at your uh, the use of themes, uh, this is something slightly more technical where you change uh, uh, or enhance some of your theme.css files. But once you've created that, it is a very effective way to actually navigate and uh, making things visually appealing to a user. Because what we do in this particular case, uh, we can see that uh, on the top visualization, uh, the red I can assign to domestic. The blue is my international sales. So immediately when I go to the next one, I can see domestic versus international. So that is fine. But at the bottom, there is no legend. But because I used my theme, what it did was to assign international a blue color and it assigned uh, domestic the red color. So throughout the application and if there is no uh, legend available, I immediately associate the colors based on those two uh, values being domestic and international. This is a visualization trick which I think makes this type of presentation very effective. 
And then uh, some announcements on our geocoding, uh, what we've seen in uh, February, well, in the November release, where it actually, you could find your point on a map. Um, and then from that point, you could use the circular reference that you could enable or the lasso selection on a map, which enabled you then to actually pick up certain se selection criteria within a radius around you. They've actually uh, enhanced this. And in this case, what they have done is to create a view, a uh, uh, capability to show the top 10 uh, or nearest uh, airports uh, uh, surrounding or uh, according to my actual location. And as you can see, it pinpointed that my selection is in the Empire State Building and immediately it identified the airports around me, as you can see on the map when I do that lookup. So I think again, uh, those that do make use of uh, geo uh, mapping, a very effective way of actually showing and uh, enabling the, uh, the, the interaction with information within a map. Then for our April 2020 release, what we have seen is the organizational chart, as I've mentioned, uh, a nice way of really presenting your HR information. So if I actually expand, I can see everybody within uh, my uh, structure reporting to a particular person and making that navigation so much if more effective. Uh, different ways of showing the information uh, as shown here is we can use the org chart, which I really think is the most effective way. And if I look at a pivot table, yes, I can see the same information uh, showing me in a different way. And those were the, the older ways of actually showing me information. And then the, uh, a, a network chart. I don't know how many of you actually make use of a network chart, but again, this is effective way of showing, uh, you know, if I look at uh, Joan Collins, who reports to me, a uh, very effective and clear way of showing that type of information. Uh, going back, I can see what is happening and I can create various selections. If I look at the same type of information just in a straight table, yes, there I can see the information and the provisor here being that I at least need a manager ID with an employee ID so that I can actually create that standard lookup through a click uh, functionality to create the org structure. When we look at the shared bookmarks, as you can see, uh, it is when, once a bookmark has been created, it is really a case of uh, creating that. Uh, if you go into once created, right click on that uh, bookmark and you can go to copy link. So pretty much there you can see the bookmarks. I can right click and I can see uh, the options coming through. Um, so again, we can then copy that link and we can send it on to somebody who can then share uh, what I am seeing on my side. So it's not necessarily something that you want to share with everybody. It is with uh, uh, an individual and you can make it public. Uh, sharing to a bigger audience, you would use the normal public stream uh, or the community stream to publish that and make it available to a bigger audience where everybody can see it. So this one is more for individual people to uh, Create that. You can also, from a drop down, uh, create uh, a sheet or, um, or export that sheet if you have a particular view to PDF and email that view to an individual person because that would be in PDF format. So, a different way of collaborating with your users, whether it's in a group or whether it is an individual person. If we look at our relative modifiers, uh, as we can see, um, really uh, quite easy to create. So if we look at that uh, uh, visualization, I go in and I can see for my cost of sales, I enabled the modifier to a relative uh, view or number. It then changed my percent to my percentage sign. And here I still have control of selecting the number and then the percentage sign so that I can show this effectively. Uh, what I do like is the fact that you can see uh, 
picking up if you have one dimension and it will uh, work out that contribution of that relativeness uh, amongst that single contribution, uh, that dimension. If you have more than one dimension as shown here, or the two dimensions, it will work out your relativeness within that dimension. So again, a very effective way of showing it. The only thing that I have to say, um, this is not available on pivot tables uh, yet, but please watch the space. A sheet triggers, as I've mentioned, on the actual sheet, you now have an option if you go to the sheet properties, please note, not object properties, but sheet uh, properties, you now have this option where you can enable new actions and that action could either be a navigation to a different sheet or the selection uh, within a particular uh, value, uh, e.g. category name or year, or even the setting of bookmarks. And yes, you can also set variables by this actual action. So making or bringing in the guided analytics closer within ClickSense. So that at the end of the day, it's pretty much what you've experienced in ClickView, you will start seeing it in ClickSense. Please note that this is for navigation uh, from sheets to objects. Uh, what it doesn't include is the show and hide of objects as we've uh, uh, worked, played, well, used a technique used in ClickView where you had two objects on top of each other and where you could show or hide. That is not enabled because what we are doing is when we look at this, uh, we are actually interacting through a browser or a web interface. And then uh, if you look at our pivot tables, so here you can see that nice example in this particular case, uh, just based on that sort order. So again, if you click on the visualization and you go to your uh, sorting, the option here to sort by measure is on, and it's literally just a toggle switch on or off. And what that enables is uh, where you can do your sort order by expression, and then within that, based on the actual uh, dimensions selected. And then in addition to table formatting, what we see here in, uh, is the search option where this table with links. Here I can see label and URL. So if I do go to uh, my smart search and I start typing in baby where, so what I will see is, yes, it picks it up on a brand style, but now we can also see it in the actual URL and also uh, in our labels. So very nice way and a big enhancement to the actual uh, search functionality. The freeze column uh, on the devices, so as you can see, being enabled and as you scroll, <coughs> excuse me, it keeps your uh, headings and totals and you can now scroll down, keeping or uh, giving you some context of what you are looking at. And then at least, uh, oh, sorry, there's still two more on maps. On maps, as I've said, they've increased the 50,000 uh, items being shown, uh, being displayed on your uh, maps. Um, and I do want to just jump to the next one because I see we've got one minute left, is the actual KPIs. Uh, as you can see, the top one where it is based on a relative uh, view and, uh, sorry, in this case, a fixed view versus a fluid view versus our uh, responsive view. And what does that mean? Based on the properties, uh, if I go into uh, edit mode, what we would have experienced is uh, if you change it, you can see the layout behavior in this particular case is responsive. And when it's responsive, if I minimize that view and I select done, it will render the text uh, uh, according to the space that I have available. If it is on fixed and the, the text is set to big, then what will happen is it will start replacing the end digits with dots, making it uh, fixed. And you can then, even if you do change it, it will remain within that position. And as you can see, top property being fixed. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all from uh, this uh, session. Um, are there any questions? Keska, there hasn't been any questions posted so far, so we've been encouraging people to actually 
post their votes. But if you would like to post a question, please unmute yourself. And then you can post your question to the. Great. Um, it sounds like there are no questions. Uh, then in that case, uh, I think we can then finish the session. If you have uh, any questions. Hello, Hi, this is Chandra Gandhi yes. here. I think we have posted the, the four or five question here uh, uh, during the session was going on. OK. Yes, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, we'd like to set up a separate session with you guys. I think a few of the questions was related to the to the update session, but I think there were a few questions that were outside of the scope of this particular update session. So uh, would it be useful for us to have a um, session set up where we could discuss the questions with you guys? Uh, no problem, then it's okay. Yeah. Great. I'll ask and Mandy I'll, just to set that up yeah. for us. I will schedule oh. a session and I've got all the questions that um, they posted on the group. Okay, no problem. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for taking part in posting the questions. Yeah. Uh, if there's no other questions, any other question? Well, in that case, I'm going to thank you again for joining this uh, click update session. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got the click view update session with a more detailed general click sense uh, demo in that session as well. We'll be covering some of the embedded analytics um, uh, capabilities. So um, how do you embed click sense objects within a third party site or application? Um, we'll also be having more regular updates um, where we drill into specific components, for example, um, the insight, click insight bot, um, um, and click alert. Uh, so um, please watch out for those invites coming to your inbox soon. Thank you very much for Skalk and the, the team for running the presentation as well as for running the Q&A session. If there's any additional question, please reach out to your AE and they'll be happy uh, to connect with the right people to sort that out. Thank you. you. Have a good time. Stay safe. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye and stay safe.